Wow, that's a lot of weeds. How can we plant this thing today? Well, hello and welcome to Bowtie Life, where we talk mostly about life in the garden. And I'm very excited today, but more about that in about 30 seconds. I'm Bowtie David. We live here in Destin, Florida, Zone 9B. And today we are going to talk about an organic, weed-killing, worm-attracting mulch that is free for your weedy garden. Yeah, you see my weedy garden. We're gonna get this thing ready for planting. Uh, I should be able to plant it today. As far as what I'm excited about, it's not about all the Everglaze tomatoes that are volunteering right here next to me. I think I've got about 10 plants that are coming up. Not about that. So we have a huge announcement coming up Sunday, March 31st, 2024. No spoilers on this project, but we've been working on it since November of last year and I'm very excited about it. So be sure and check out, it's, it's, it comes out 48 hours after this video comes out on our channels, but, uh, 615 Central Standard Time, uh, Central whatever time, Central Time, there you go. Just stick with that. Uh, please be sure to subscribe to Bowtie Life on YouTube. Uh, if you have not already done so, so you don't miss a thing, videos come out on YouTube first. Uh, to those of you who have subscribed, you are my heroes. You have helped grow Bowtie Life into what it is today. Hi, I'm Bowtie Dave. So I want to talk about uh, a way to flip a bed. You know, we're getting into spring. We're starting to flip our beds. We're starting to get ready to go the new year. This bed has been completely neglected by the owner of this bed. It's me, I know, I did it. But there's weeds, grass, there's all kinds of thick beds of everything in here that has to get taken care of. And I really didn't care because I have a free way to take care of this bed. Now, I will admit, you'll notice the soil is down about uh, eight inches, maybe 10 inches from where it originally was. Uh, so we're gonna be doing more than just what I'm gonna show in this video. I can't believe all the stuff growing in here. But the big thing is it's free. <laughs> That's what blows my mind. People get to thinking that just because something is free, we have to spend lots of money to do things right. No. We don't, folks. We don't have to spend lots of money to do things right. You know, farming has been happening a lot longer than our current culture. Farming has been happening for thousands of years, and people have been doing it for a lot less money than we spend today. And I've done recently done a few things on free stuff for this seed starting season. I'll put some links to some of those free stuff videos in the upper right hand corner of this video. That's the little lowercase i in the upper right hand corner. You click that, a little pop out comes out, has some extra links in it. There's lots of stuff you can get for free. And I just think we need to explore those avenues before we'd sink too much money into something. I, for one, I can't afford that. I don't want to afford that. I enjoy getting my hands in the dirt. You know, the, uh, well, you know, let's just get into this and get right to my method that I've been using. I've been doing this for years. I really like it. Well, let me show you. Okay, yeah, it's corrugated cardboard. It's very simple. Now, I hear people talk about corrugated cardboard. Uh, I call it, it's, it's corrugation, I know what it is, uh, but there is a lot about this that we have to keep in mind. Number one, this is organic and green. This cardboard, this corrugation, I'll get it right, this corrugation is mostly made from recycled materials. Materials that used to be paper products of other kinds. This paper product is, is ground down into fine fiber it's not bleached, it's not chemically treated, it is put together in a paper form and reconstituted somehow in corrugation. And it's useful. This, these are double wall corrugated boards. You'll notice there's no ink on these. However, even if you get refrigerator boxes and appliance boxes and there's ink on them, there is so little chemical in that ink 
In fact, most inks aren't even chem don't have chemicals in them, but there are so few chemicals in the tiny bit of ink used that you're not going to affect your garden growing at all, period, enough said. I'm not gonna say any more about that. So it is organic, it's green. I do try to peel off the tape and, the, and staples when I get boxes. I do wanna tell you where I get these from here in just a minute, but um, something else that's important about corrugation, uh, First off is paper product. You know, we've had paper product since the days of Egypt. This is not anything new. And the method for making this stuff hasn't changed a lot in several hundred years either. It's the same stuff. Now, what that means is we have a lot of natural fiber that's gonna be going into the garden. And that's a good thing, a natural organic fiber. That stuff, one of the first things that attracts is worms. Now, worms, Yep, they might be disgusting, they might be icky. Worms are one of the first things you want in your garden because they are the foundation, the beginning of the biome that is gonna be in your soil. Biome, why is biome important? Is biome important? Say it with me, yes, biome is important in your soil. That's the living soil, the algae, the bacteria, the virus, the mold, everything that's growing inside that soil that's breaking down the nutrients and making it ready for the plants. That's the biome. It's doing a lot of magic stuff that God created them to do. They're, it's wonderful stuff that we need to have. The biome in our body, science knows now and has known for about 50 years that there are more non-human cells in a healthy human body than there are human cells. That biome lining the membranes of your body that allow certain things to pass through, the stomach, the, the, the brain, the, 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 the muscle fiber, everything in your body uh, has biome contact, connected to it. I'll spit it out here in a second. Has biome connected to it that makes it function properly. And so worms are one of the first things in that biome you're gonna see when you set up a healthy garden. And I got worms in here. I can dig any part of this bed and I can find worms. So what happens is the worms are attracted to this paper breaking down. They start eating this paper. The corrugations, this is really cool. They'll actually sleep in the corrugations of the cardboard. I've actually seen them lined up in those corrugations. They'll eat the top layer off and then they'll be napping in the corrugations and then keep on eating. So it actually is a perfect environment for those worms. Another thing that this cardboard will do is it's gonna smother all these weeds. Not some of these weeds, not most of these weeds, everything, okay? Everything. It will do a most complete job. And the great thing is when this cardboard has done its job, it will be part of the organic matter in the garden. It will become more of the nutrients in the garden. In the process of doing that, in fact, we just had a big rain. I don't know if you can tell, these are kind of floppy because they're wet. We just had a big rain about an hour ago. Oh, is that blue sky? No, it is not blue sky. Uh, yes, I, I can't tell. Anyway, um, squirrel. So <laughs> here we go. Um, one of the things that this will help do in the meantime is it will help hold the essential moisture needed for that healthy soil in the soil. And so multiple purposes for having using cardboard. Uh, it will break down. Now, ultimately it will break down in about three months. That's typically what I find. If you watch the garden tours that we do, we go, especially the outer beds, we have two beds out here. The arch trellis just off camera here where we're gonna be growing loofah and the corn bed. Both of these were started by laying down cardboard and then putting between eight to 12 inches of compost on top of it. And so it, that cardboard down there is very soft. You've seen me in the, uh, pretty sure I did it in the February garden tour, but also maybe the March garden tour where I dug down and you could actually see, I could poke my finger through it easily. Now this stuff's a little tougher because it's, it's still mostly not wet. It's pretty easy to tear right here on the edges where it's wet, but this stuff will break down in about three months. Now, I'm intending on planting this thing out in the next couple days. 
And you're gonna say, well, how are you gonna plant this out in the next couple days? Well, what I'm gonna do for this particular bed, uh, I mean, I'm gonna show you the points at which you can mulch in the fall if you want to, or just a couple of months before you're gonna be preparing to plant things. But what I'm gonna be doing here is I'm gonna be putting down the cardboard to kill all these old weeds, get them taken care of once and for all. And then I'm gonna put about eight to 10 inches of compost on top of it so that I can just start planting in that compost. By the time the roots get down to this stuff, eight to 10 inches in the ground, this stuff will be broken up enough. The worms will have shredded it enough. They will be able to poke roots as far down as they need to go. It is a little windy right now because we're after the storm. It's awesome. It feels great out here. I'm out here in my shirt sleeve. I could be out here, I think, in short sleeves. It's, it's maybe just a few degrees cool for that. But anyway, I wanted to just kind of walk through the process of doing this because it's very easy. It's organic. It's green. It attracts biome, it smothers the weeds, it holds the water. Best of all, folks, it's free, free, free. Oh, so let me talk about where I get this from. Number one, it is very important, and, and folks, this is very important, make friends, meet people. Don't be afraid to say hi to somebody. I'll admit, I'm a little bit of an introvert. I'm standing out here in the garden all by myself, talking to a camera. I like this, makes me feel comfortable, but I am a bit of an introvert. However, when I go into Lowe's, I make sure to talk to the people that work there. Number one, I appreciate everything they do. Number two, there's a fellow back in my shipping department that saves these big sheets. And, 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 and let me show you how big this sheet is. is six foot by seven foot, okay? No tape, no ink, one fold. These are actually used in shipping to the stores from the warehouse for Lowe's. And they put these in that big corrugated compactor. And if you can make friends with one of the guys that helps run the place, the shipping yard, you can have them save some pieces for you possibly. I know Bobby, here in uh, the Destin store, he's a great guy, big beard. Uh, he uh, he saves these for me, but I don't use nearly what he saves, and he actually gives out to other people. So, if you're here in Destin, there's a good source for huge sheets of great cardboard. I also get the refrigerator ones that he saves. Uh, you have to pull off a little bit of tape. Generally, brand new refrigerator boxes uh, have very little tape, no staples generally glue don't even worry about the glue just kind of put it out there so anyway i'm gonna put these pieces out here i'm using two layers of this stuff yeah two layers it's okay because i got a big pile i just got a big pile of it uh the other day last week i think it was and so uh yeah i'm gonna get working on this
And folks, there you have it. Very simple, right? A few layers of cardboard, which were free. About two inches of compost, which incidentally was free. I just got it out at the equestrian uh, center at Kelly Plantation here in Destin. They are giving the stuff away. This is not new. They've been giving it away for two decades or more. It's good stuff, stuff you can use. My strawberries are loving it this year. It's a little bit dark like this. It still has a bit of woody chip in it. The cool thing about that is that the dark stuff will settle down into the soil, enriching it, and the wood chip will act like a additional mulch on top of it. Folks, this is ready to sit for about two months, maybe three months. I've been experimenting with how long to cover these things with, and one month is too short. Two months does pretty good. Three months is pretty rock solid, though I'll admit, got one bed over here, our dollar weed is very persistent, and I've gotta leave it a little bit longer for dollar weed, but we're getting there. So anyway, this is extremely simple process, folks. You just saw the whole thing. I laid down the cardboard. I put the compost on top of it. Two wheelbarrows, I got 12 feet done. Another wheelbarrow, and I'm gonna have more of this done. Now, what I'm gonna be doing now and, and, and this is ready to go. It's a bed ready to go. If this were fall, it would be ideal. If this were the end of the plant, the growing season and come around, you know, November for most parts of the country, you come around November, you do this to your beds, we'll put them to rest. You could actually put another layer of compost on top. I mean, I mean, another layer of cardboard temporarily on top of all this and help get those weeds killed extra more. Is that a word extra more? Uh, but that will, solve a lot of weed problems over the winter. It does for me. I'm going a step farther today. You can see that the soil is still down about six inches. I'm gonna be breaking open my compost bins and I'm gonna be putting my current compost in here along with more of this horse muck, this horse bedding compost. And this compost, by the way, incidentally, is at least two years old. It's been sitting there at least two years. So it's getting dark, it's getting rich, it's getting changed, and it's got a lot of great nutrients in it for, uh, for your plants. And so I will be putting my compost and more of the horse bedding compost, bringing this thing up about that high over the bed. I'm gonna be then lowering this trellis because I wanna put another uh, cattle panel underneath my supports here so I can put shade cloth this summer. That's gonna be the rest of the uh, project here. So I'm gonna continue on fighting this wind. By the way, this is my bean trellis. This is my tomato trellis. I think we're gonna put more tomatoes on this trellis this year. More beans here. We're just discussing it this morning. Ready for our Blue Lake Stringless Pole Beans. Yum. So <laughs> thanks for following along. Thanks for watching today. I appreciate it. For those of you who have subscribed, I said this in the beginning, I'll say it again over and over. Thank you for subscribing to Bowtie Life on YouTube. You are my heroes. You have made the channel what it is today. We are that close to breaking 900. You know, it was just 20 days ago I was saying, hey, we just broke 800. In 20 days, we're that close to breaking 900. From the day I'm recording this, this is Friday, March 22nd, and I'm very excited about that. Uh, we are working hard to grow our channel to the next level. And once we get to that point, we can do so much more. And I'm excited about it. Almost as excited as getting rid of all these weeds. Uh, for those just finding Bowtie Life on YouTube for the first time, this is my own personal journal of everything going on in the garden. I now know that March 22nd, I turned this bed, finally. I'm a month and a half late, but you know, whatever. Not gonna worry about it. Here we go, moving forward. Uh, with my ADD brain, I have tried journaling, I've tried photography, I've tried the logging apps uh, for the progress in the garden, but making these videos really speaks to my unique brain. Sometimes I will just leave the videos running, my videos running on the TV as I'm getting ready in the morning. And sometimes I get excited and say, oh, there's something I forgot. I go out, take care of a five minute task because I forgot it a month and a half ago and it's done. So that's kind of how my process goes every day. Uh, be sure to subscribe to Bowtie Life on YouTube so you don't miss a thing happening in the garden as we document everything. Everything. Yeah, I do. I know. I over document. Again, it's my personal journal. Another way you can help grow the channel is hit the thumbs up on this video down below. Hit that thumbs up and click like on this video. Uh, 
comment on the video. If you have any questions, please ask questions. I love hearing your questions and comments and and everything. I do still have loquat trees about so tall. If anybody local wants a loquat tree, get in touch with me and we'll get you one of the one or two of these loquat trees. I got a few left over here. Be sure to share this video on your social media with friends that also are excited about getting the, ready for the new gardening year. Have a blessed day. Thank you.